Now let's try this example, graph and find the foci of the following equation, x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. So now let's find the foci of x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. Um, it's easiest to find all the information if I don't have it in this format, but if I have it into that equal 1 format. So if I divide the whole thing by 16, I'm going to get x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And now, uh, remember, this bigger number, if I square root it and I double it, I'm going to get the length of the major axis. And then I know if I square root this number and double it, I get 4 as the length of my minor axis. And that's going to totally help me graph this thing when I have to graph it. I, know now, I now know the extent of the graph. But this also helps me figure out the location of the foci because, remember, this value here is A, and this value b, there is b, and if we remember, b squared equals a squared minus c squared. And in this case, b squared is 4, and a squared is 16, and so that means that c squared is going to equal to 12, or c is going to equal to plus or minus 2 root 3. What this means is that I have an ellipse oriented in this fashion, because the larger number is over the x, that means it's the foci are oriented horizontally. I know this one has a center at 0, 0. And I know this value here is 2, and that value there is negative 2. And I know this value here is 4, and this value here is negative 4. And that doesn't tell me what the foci are, but this number totally does. My foci are located here and here, approximately. So the coordinates of my foci are negative 2 root 3, 0, and 2 root 3, 0. Now let's try this example. Find the equation of an ellipse with x-intercepts at plus or minus 5 and y-intercepts at plus or minus 7. And if I think about the way this ellipse is going to work, I have negative 5 and 5, 7 and negative 7. That means this length here is my major axis. And that means that a is going to equal 7, and b is going to equal 5. And so a squared is 49, and b squared is 25. And the hardest part of the ellipse is remembering under which variable the 49 and 25 go. Since I have a vertically oriented major axis, that means that the larger number, the 49, goes under y squared. And so my equation simply is x squared over 25 plus y squared over 49 equals 1. And now for this example, find an equation of an ellipse having foci negative 4, 0, and 4, 0 with a focal radii sum of 12. And we're not going to use a definition. We're going to go ahead and use the shortcut for this one. Now I have to write an equation for the ellipse with foci located at plus or minus 4, comma 0 and a sum of focal radii of 12. And I can, of course, use the definition of the ellipse to write this equation, but you saw in the beginning how much work that was. So let's try to avoid that like the plague, shall we? So I know the sum represents 2a. That means that a is 6. And remember, 6, this is the length of half the major axis. So from the center to the furthest part of the ellipse is going to be 6. Now, my foci are located here at negative 4 and 4, which means my major axis is horizontally oriented. So that means that the bigger number is going to be under the x. And I also know that these foci from the center, this length here, is c. So I know that c is 4. And then I have that fundamental relationship between a, b, and c for in ellipse, it's b squared equals a squared minus c squared. And then I plug in what I know, which are a and c. So I get 36 minus 16 equals b squared. And so then b squared is equal to 20. And I really don't need to simplify that radical to find out what b is, because I'm not asking for the length of the minor axis or anything. What I'm asking for is the equation. So I have an x squared over some number plus a y squared over some number equals 1. And then I go back and, rem and remember, oh yeah, the foci are horizontally aligned, which means the bigger number goes under x, so the 36 goes there, and the 20 goes there. 
So instead of doing this in 20 steps by the, using the definition, if I remember the relationship between A, B, and C, and I remember what A, B, and C are, then this is all the work I need to do for finding the equation for that ellipse. Now finally, what happens when I shift the center of the ellipse? Well, actually not much. It's a lot like the equation for a circle, actually. Um, b squared is still equal to a squared minus c squared, and this the numerators look just like the equation for a circle. It's just now we have major axis and minor axis to deal with. And I suggest that you draw a picture for this equation that has this information to help you when you actually work with ellipses. And for the one with the vertical major axis, same deal. It looks just like the circle equation and it looks just like the previous equation. It's just remember the location of the major and minor axes have to swap when you have a different orientation for your ellipse. Now for that final example, let's find an equation of the ellipse having foci at negative 3, 4, and 9, 4, where the sum of the focal radii is 14. Now if you forget the shortcut and all the information in the previous slide, you of course can do this by definition, but it's going to take you a long time. And now to write that final equation for that ellipse, once again, if you want to, you can go ahead and spend 20 minutes and find this equation by definition, or we can just remember some stuff about ellipses and how their equations work. So first and foremost, I need to find the center. And so if I think about where the foci are, I have negative 3, 4 as focus 1, and 9, 4 as focus 2. It's horizontally aligned, which means the bigger number is going to be under the x, right? And so now I know that the sum is really that 2a, and so then a equals 7. Now, I have to find the center, and so I have to find the midpoint of this line segment, which is going to be something comma 4, and midway between negative 3 and 9 is 3. So my center is located at 3, 4, which also tells me that length there. So going from 3 to 9 is 6 units, so I know that C, the distance from the center to a focus, is 6. And then all I have to do now is find out what B is using my special relationship of b squared equaling a squared minus c squared. So I don't know what b squared is, but I know a squared is 49 and c squared is 36, which gives me b squared equals 13. And so now I have to write my equation. And remember, this one, its center is not the origin, so I have to start it off like it were a circle by putting in the center in parentheses with the x and y, and then the bigger number goes under the x, so a squared, which is 49, goes under the x, and 13 goes under the y's, and that's the equation of my ellipse. And once again, remembering b squared equals a squared minus c squared was the key to making writing this equation super easy.